Are you Tragwax is back and today I'm here with a new build video for New World. Today I want to show you my new build with the Crydex and the Hatchet. And I can tell you guys, this melee combo is crazy. We have very good melee damage. It works also in PvE, not only in PvP. And guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. I show you now the build. I would say we start here with the attribute points, then I show you the gear that I'm using and at least I show you the skills. So let's go into the attribute points and you can see already we go full into strength. And here I also use sometimes this food here that gives you extra 20 strength for 30 minutes. So let's use it and then you can see guys we have a bit more strength. We have, we have 345. I know this food isn't the best but for the moment it's okay, it's cheap, it's not so expensive like like the better food and you don't need the cooking skill so high and we have extra damage this is important you don't need this food for trash mobs or something i would use it only for special fights if you go extra in pvp or when you do a dungeon you can use it but for the normal trash mobs i wouldn't use the this food it's it's a bit, a bit too expensive and too annoying to craft in the moment okay so you guys can see we are going full into strength we have 345 strength for all the passives here really important is the last one here so we can't get stunned when we do a light or heavy attack this is really really good and we are also using 100 points into constitution and these points are really important for me because without these points as a melee fighter you are very very squishy so definitely go for minimum 100 points into constitution for the extra 20% heal with your consumables and for extra 10% health based on your physical armor. So I would definitely put some points into constitution, it's definitely worth it. For sure you lose some damage but to survive it's in most situations more important than the damage. So you can see it here, I have 10k health and this is definitely enough. Okay guys, these are the attribute points, now I show you the gear that I'm using in the moment. For sure, this gear is changing, I'm not on the maximum gear score. I think that most of you guys are not on the maximum gear score, I think no one really is on this. But I'm on 552, I think this is already really decent. Maybe I can't show you the best in slot gear right now, I think no one really can do this. But I can show you the gear that I'm using right now, I can show you the rate of the gear and also the traits. So. Yeah, you guys can see it here on the left. I'm on 22.9. I'm still a medium. I go in medium because on a melee fighter you need to be a bit tankier than a range damage class. So I go in medium here. You guys can see it. I'm on 22.9. So I'm close to the heavy armor because I'm going with two pieces heavy, the chest and the legs and then one in medium, the shoes here. The other two pieces are light. You can change this as well, you don't need to use the shoes in medium, you can also go with the hands or the head, there's no different. Also the armor rating is the same, so you can switch this if you get a better helmet and then go with the helm. Okay, so guys, the chest and the legs should be heavy because then you get the most resistance. Yeah, you guys can see the heavy chest gives you 530 armor and this is a lot. The next thing that you should check on your armor is that you go with strength or constitution because we need both of these attributes so go with the armor that buffs your strength or constitution. You don't need dex, you don't need all the other things, go only with armor that gives you these buffs. And I put on the things, yeah, on the armor pieces where I can use the enchantment, you guys can see it here. I put the enchantment that I get less elemental damage and a bit less physical damage. Elemental damage because the most people that are range classes are mages and these are the biggest problem as a melee fighter. You have to go to them and so the extra damage reduction from their attacks is nice to have and we get also a bit less physical damage so it's fine. The chest and the legs that I'm using, you guys can see it here, they are easy to get. You can buy them on the PvP merchant, Yeah, they cost 25k PvP points and a bit gold. But they are definitely worth it. Yeah, these are two heavy pieces, they give you strength and constitution and they're definitely really really good in this build. Now I would say we take a look on the weapons that I'm using and here I go with the 580 gear score weapons that you can get from the weapon master requests and they are definitely worth it. For sure they have not the best enchantments for PvP, definitely. But they have a good base damage because they are on 580 gear score and when you get level 60, as a beginner as level 60, they are easy to get and they buff your gear score a lot and they are from the base damage better than the most weapons that you can find in the moment. So I go with this both weapons here, you guys can see they give me also 28 strength so they are really really strong and the base damage is also very high. For PvE they are really good if you fight Corrupted, you can see they are 18% more damage to Corrupted. For these guys it's really strong, 
But for PvP, maybe the enchantments are not the best, definitely, but they are easy to get and have a good base damage. The necklace that I'm using is the Infinity Crystal. You guys can see it, it gives us 570 gear score, 23 strength. The Divine trait is good, we get more healing. And also the health trait is really good. We have 9% more maximum health. This fits perfectly into this build. And you can get this necklace really fast here in the Shattered Mountain. There is a side quest where you can get the necklace. I don't know which side quest, but there is a side quest. And it's easy to get by a quest. So, and 570 gear score buffs your gear score overall a lot. The ring that I'm using is maybe not the best. I bought it from other player because the gear score was high and it gives me constitution a lot. But the traits are maybe not the best. I mean, the ice damage absorption is not bad if you fight the enemy, yeah, a person that used the ice gauntlets yeah, in PvP, it's not so bad. And also the arcane damage at the end, it was okay because I changed the enchantment here on the Kradex to um, arcane damage. On the on the hatchet, it's based, yeah, on the, if you find it, if you get it from the crest, it's already with the arcane damage. But on the uh, Kratex, it's no, normally is fire damage. I change it also to arcane because this ring gives me extra 4.6 more arcane damage. So I bought this ring. At first I thought it's not so good, but at the end it was okay and not so bad. And the last item here in this build that is very shiny here on the bottom is this legendary here. And this legendary is only on level 54, but for the beginning and for the moment when you get level 60 and also before, you can farm it already with level 54, you can use it. Um, it's very, very strong. So you can farm this legendary here on this spot. There's a small enemy, it looks like a normal enemy, but there's a guy with a name and if you kill this guy, there's a drop chance that you can get this legendary. And this legendary is super strong in this build. It gives you also constitution that we need and it gives you, look at the bonuses. We get the potion cooldown. This is so strong, you can use your potions more. This is very useful in PvP as a burst here. We can use a potion to so heal us. We have the regenerating, yeah, the region. We get health region every second based on our maximum health. So it fits perfectly into this build. And when you drink a potion, there's also the chance that you don't use it. This is not so important. It's a nice extra feature, but the two other bonuses are super strong. And also the strike damage absorption is nice to have. So this is the gear that I'm using in the moment in PvE and in PvP. I forgot to say there is a bug with this necklace. I noticed the bug when you teleport, I think it happens after you teleport to your other location, the regenerating is not working. When this happens, put it out, yeah, put it in your inventory and put it on again, then it's fixed. I noticed this, sometimes it's not working and when you have this bug, yeah, you know, put it out and put it on again. It's a bit annoying, I hope they fix it soon. Now I would say we talk about the skills that I'm using and we start on the Great Axe. Here I have a question for you guys, should I talk about all the passives as well? No, I don't do it because you can see it basically, but when you say I should talk a bit about the passives that I'm using, then tell it to me guys, because it needs a long time to talk about all the passives. I talk only about the skills and why I'm using them, but if you also say talk a bit about the passives, then write it down in the comments, please. And guys, I'm using here the Reap because the Reap pulls your enemies to you. We have an 8 meters range with this passive here. And it's also a heal. Yeah, the damage is also a heal. And we do a spin after this attack. It's this attack here. We pull and we do a spin after this. And this skill is really powerful because we can pull the range classes to us and get them in a melee situation. And it deals also decent damage and a heal. So this skill is for me a must-have skill in this build. The next Kratex skill that I'm using is the charge here. It's our cap closer. Yeah, we can go with the skill fast to the range classes or we can follow people that try to run away. And we have also extra damage based on how far we travel. I'm not going with this passive here because I never really used it with the white mouse button. I'm more into more passives instead of this skill here. So I'm using only this both and not the third one. The third skill that I'm using on the Kratex is the Maelstrom, but you can also go with the Gravity Well. The problem with the Gravity Well is you need to go for two passives here in this tree and the passives are, in my opinion here, not so useful. It's okay, but um, you have to put a point outside the left tree to get all the passives here as well. So this is the problem with the Gravity Well. The skill is also very strong and I used it a lot. It's also good, but the Maelstrom is also fine. Um, for the damage, the Maelstrom is definitely better, yeah? So we have two fast spinning attacks and you can do a nice combo. You can do two light attacks and then you use the spin. So you have four attacks with the Great Axe and this is a lot of burst damage. So the Maelstrom is also very good and it's also a pull. So we have a pull here, we have a pull here and a charge here. So we can get all the range classes and immediately fight 
and this is very strong. There's also a passive that absorbs the projectiles while you use the skill. It's also okay here yeah, when a guy is shooting from the side, you can absorb his projectiles. And yeah, guys, these are the skills that I'm using on the Crytex, and now I go into the hatchet. And here you guys can see I skilled the full left side. The Berserker tree is so powerful, in my opinion we have here the best buff in this game. We get an extra 20% damage buff, we get a speed buff, we get a heal over time and we can't get done while the Berserker is active. This is crazy guys, it's so powerful and also this passive here is so crazy. We get immortal when we die for 3 seconds and we survive with 50 HP and this is also so powerful and strong because this gives us the the situation that we can try to, when it procs, we can try to finish our enemy. Yeah, sometimes they're getting hungry and try to kill you, they try to finish you and they don't check their health and then you can try to finish them. Yeah, or you try to heal up, you try to run away, it gives you an extra 3 seconds to survive. And in PvE it's also so powerful because if you fight bosses for example, they deal a lot of damage, Yeah, you can survive the one hits and all the stuff with this passive. We have here also a small cap closer, the Feral Rush, it's also a finisher. And it's also a root, yeah, when the enemy tries to run away, you can jump in his back and then it also roots your enemy. And a spammable. This spammable is also very powerful, we get a speed buff from it and we can do an extra attack after we finish the skill. And um, yeah, this is also very good, yeah, you can use it with your Berserker together and you deal a lot of damage. Okay guys, these are the skills that I'm using, this is the build that I'm using. I hope you like and enjoy it. And guys, we see us in the next video. Don't forget to write in the comments below if I should talk a bit about more of the passives. We see us in the next video. Have a nice day and bye bye.